A tree falls in the forest. It's one of the hundreds of trees chopped down in an area bigger than a football pitch every second around the globe. The difference is that this tree, located in the Amazon jungle, was carefully selected from thousands to be harvested without damaging the forest. It's part of a forestry plot which stretches for more than 200 square kilometers at Peru's intersection with Brazil and Bolivia. It's run by Madaracre, one of the only sustainable forestry companies in Peru. Manager Nelson Kroll explains. Mira, nosotros somos un proyecto eh, de, de, de transformación de la madera que utiliza solamente como fuente de abastecimiento nuestras propias concesiones. De esa forma garantizamos la trazabilidad del producto y podemos ofrecerle a, a nuestros clientes al 100% que nuestra madera proviene eh, de una fuente donde se maneja el recurso de una manera responsable. Eh, lamentablemente todavía hay muchos compradores de madera que no les interesa la, pro, la procedencia de la madera. Eh, nosotros principalmente exportamos nuestros productos a Europa, que es uno de los mercados que más reconoce el estándar FSC. Peru is home to the second largest chunk of the Amazon rainforest after Brazil. And like its larger neighbor, vast tracts of its forest continue to be illegally cleared for globally traded commodities like timber, palm oil and gold. It's the hunt for gold which has laid waste to huge swathes of Madre de Dios, Peru's southernmost Amazon region and attracted criminal gangs, says leading local conservationist Victor Zambrano. Es tan rentable que en, lo, en la actualidad, en nuestro Perú, es superior, superior, se lo digo, al narcotráfico. ¿no? Es más rentable que el, 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 la actividad del narcotráfico. Entonces, imagínense pues quién no se animaría, digamos, a hacer, a hacer minería sin ningún tipo de control. ¿no? donde cua, cada cual puede entrar a cualquier playa, a cualquier lugar, digamos, hacer su actividad y nadie le va a decir nada. Ahora, la gente, son seres humanos, son inteligentes. Y siempre una interrogación que ha habido, porque yo tengo muchos amigos de esa, de, de, de esa actividad, simplemente la, el interrogante y lo que ellos dicen, ¿no? yo soy consciente de lo que está sucediendo, de lo que estamos haciendo, pero nadie nos dice nada. Gold fever has attracted tens of thousands of fortune-seeking migrants to the jungle from poor Andean regions nearby. Only from the air can you take in the full scale of the destruction caused by illegal mining. It's an open wound in this, the most biodiverse corner of Peru's rainforest. And the vast majority of the damage has taken place in the last eight years. Over three decades, nearly 100 square kilometers of forest has been lost here. Deforestation peaked last year as a tenth of the overall forest loss was stripped away. But the damage goes beyond felling trees. Miners use mercury to extract gold. Around 180 tons of the neurotoxic heavy metal are dumped every year into the rivers, lakes and soil here. It's a recipe for a public health crisis and an ecological disaster. But scientists who accompanied CGTN on this flight say there are solutions. Cesar Ascora is director of the Cynthia Amazon Research Institution. Hay mucho verde y el verde es esperanza. Sí, creemos y la cinta está para eso, para buscar soluciones. As part of the reforestation experiment, scientists are trying out tree species which can survive in the sand left behind by mining. They are also using biochar compost, made from locally grown Brazil nut shells, to block the absorption of mercury and to regenerate the topsoil. At the same time, scientists are working with miners to develop more efficient practices. This new machinery uses gravity separation and bypasses the use of mercury altogether. Engineer Walter Torres says it's more profitable for the miners. Van a recuperar más oro. Ahora, tal como están ahora, están recuperando un promedio de 50%. Con este proceso pueden llegar a recuperar un 80%. Ya, eso está garantizado. Si es que operan bien. The machines are not free, 
but the training on how to use them for informal miners is. On the three-hour drive to the border with Brazil, the signs of mining slip away. Tawamanu, at the intersection of Peru, Bolivia and Brazil, is a mining-free province. Sparsely populated and remote, it was founded by rubber tappers and their descendants live on here to this day. Most people here prefer to keep the trees on their land standing and the place has become a model for sustainable forestry and acts as a carbon sink. Global forest losses are a huge contributor to the carbon emissions driving global warming equivalent to the total emissions of the world's second biggest polluter, the United States. Families like the Cardosos, who farmed here for generations, understand climate change. Y cuando llueve, llueve demasiado con tormentas y se desborda el río y se desbordan las piscigranjas. Cuando se va a trabajar al campo, a las 10, 11 de la mañana calienta de más, duele la cabeza, la gente se quema mucho, calor, ya no, ya no rinde, ya no puede trabajar, hay que venir a buscar la sombra. Scientific studies indicate temperatures in the Amazon region could rise by 2 to 3 degrees centigrade by 2050 which could turn this tropical forest into a dry savanna. Climate change is a reality, but people still have to make a living. Here they choose to do it sustainably, through forestry, farming and fish. Rather than cattle ranching, fish farms can produce up to 100 times more protein per hectare of water instead of grass. But preserving standing forest remains the priority, and extensive studies show native people are its best protectors. This indigenous community, Belhika, leases its forests to the Madarika Timber Company and gets a share of the profits, says its leader, Izon Lopez. Nosotros más antes cazamos, pescamos, ¿no? y eso salimos a vender. ¿no? Pero ahora es prohibido. Ahora ya no puedes más llevar casa así de la, así de, ¿no? de la selva a vender, porque es prohibido, ¿no? Y entonces, y, y, ¿qué nos obligó? Trabajar nuestros recursos, ¿no? que es la madera, ¿no? Para poder sobrevivir y para poder comprar también los, los implementos de nuestros hijos para, para el estudio, ¿no? The community also received funds from the United Nations Reduction of Deforestation and Degradation Program, or RED Plus, for keeping their forests standing and, in doing so, sealing in carbon stocks. Far from the international climate change negotiations in the world's major capitals, Amazon communities like this are making key decisions about how to protect their forest and, in turn, combat global warming but much of the work they do goes unrecognised by the countries in which they live. The environmental and scientific community says that the stewardship of forests, land and food is one third of the solution to capping temperature rises. But time is short. Peru lost more than 143,000 hectares of forests during 2017. The equivalent of 200,000 soccer fields, says Josefina Braña, director of the World Wildlife Fund's Forests and Climate Programme. We, we know that we are losing uh, forest every day, uh, the deforestation rate in Peru is still high, so examples as Madre Acre uh, can be replicated uh, in other parts of Peru. And this will be a win-win not only for the private sector engaged in this type of uh, um, sustainable management activities, but it will be an, uh, um, a good um, example on how Peru government can take advantage of all the landscape and the stakeholders that act in the country to actually meet their climate commitments and to be able to be more ambitious. Experts agree that by recognizing everyone's contribution, people can be encouraged to become involved in conserving flora and fauna. By using science and technology, they can find profitable ways to live without destroying nature, says the WWF's Peru director, Kurt Holley.
This is such a challenging place. It's super interesting for people that work in science and technology because if you're going to solve something and you want a really high, a really big challenge to work on, this is a place to work on it. No, you have to have citizens that want to do um, what is right for nature, not only that have to do what is right for nature. So the more you design things that people want to do, as opposed to have to do, the better off you're going to be. The stakes in this Amazon region are as high as its level of biodiversity. But faced with some of Peru's biggest environmental challenges, scientists and citizens are finding innovative solutions.